Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. <coughs> Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know mine and mine know me just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I will lay down my life for my sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead and they will hear my voice and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. The shepherd theme is very old and it's very durable. The image retains its vigor even when the once familiar occupation of the shepherd is passed from the scene. The thought of the shepherd and sheep has the power to evoke a feeling of trust that is basic to the faith that Jesus inspires. Now, in his description of the Good Shepherd, Jesus is depicting a close relationship. And that relationship is with us. And it's a relationship not based on money or power. It's based on love. And it shows itself in service. When he defines the good shepherd, he simply says, for these sheep I will give my life. And we know that he's referring to his own death for our salvation. Jesus wants us to use the shepherd as a model for our own lives. Could it be that he wants, wants all of us to give up our lives for each other? It seems that's precisely what he's suggesting. It's a suggestion that coincides with the entire gospel story, with Jesus' own story. He was constantly giving up his life for others. If by that you mean giving up time, energy, comfort, and convenience, when the people who needed him grew into crowds, they pressed him even on, at, at a time of, of his meal, meals. They pursued him through the countryside and even pushed him into the sea and onto a boat for a platform to continue his preaching. When he fled to the hills to be alone for a while, Peter came to him and said, everyone's looking for you. And he answered, let us go to the neighboring towns so that I can preach there also. If Jesus is the model shepherd, our model, 
Can it be that the gospel is calling us to unselfish activity? Dying often that others may live? And I don't think we should be afraid of those words. Certainly they can refer to martyrdom. But they also refer to a very wide pattern of human activity. They can mean that we owed our comfort, that others may be helped. We give up our sleep because others are in pain. We give up our plans, even our vacation, because of sickness in the family. Perhaps we spend less time seeking out entertainment for ourselves and become involved in the political process, for example, because we're particularly concerned that a good person should be elected. The pattern of the Christ life that I'm talking about is not a sudden martyrdom. It's a slow sacrifice. It's a kind of wearing out. One contemporary writer, I think, has a beautiful image that depicts every family meal as a sacrificial meal, which the family shares all through the years as parents grow older and children grow up. Children see their parents age, hairs turn gray, bodies weaken. This isn't just due to the passing of time, it's due also to the hard work that has brought food on the table, heat in the house, and a roof overhead. Before their very eyes around the table, children see love's sacrifice, and parents see love's fruitfulness. A Christian can perhaps be best seen not just in good times when things are running smoothly, but in times of temptation, disappointment, failure, in times when demands and pressures and multiple expectations are in evidence. If we carry the words of Jesus into our daily lives, we come to know what it means to die that others might live. The pattern is clearly seen in the life and death of Jesus. But it's also seen, if less clearly and less dramatically, in the life and death of every good person of every believer. It's there in your life. Look for it. It's there in you mothers and fathers who daily have given your lives for each other and for your children. It's there in you who help a friend through a difficult period of adjustment or through a tough course or through a loss of a loved one. It's there in you who care about the old, or the alone, or the unpopular. It's there in you who take time to rejoice in another's joy and to suffer another's pain. The pattern's there in you. Don't hesitate to look for it. In many quiet, <clears throat> excuse me, and even silent ways. You die in order that others may live. And that makes you a person of great worth. Carl Jung, the Swiss psychologist, tells us, it is only through the mystery of self-sacrifice that a person can find oneself anew. It's only through the mystery of self-sacrifice that a person can find oneself anew. And that's what Jesus asks. He asks that we continually find ourselves anew.
And when we do, the words of Jesus, the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep, then takes on new meaning.